Hi, and welcome to another episode of It Matters. I'm Eric. Today I'm here with Joe Pasilio. Uh, Joe's been on a couple times before. He's our resident cybersecurity expert, um, spent many years on the cyber side of things over at the National Security Agency. Um, he's currently an advisor to Racktop and also um, part of the senior leadership team at Ironet. Joe, always a pleasure. Great to be here. All right. Um, so today's topic, we're going to talk about um, cybersecurity and data management. Um, so in the past, we've talked about sort of, uh, you know, what keeps um, CISOs up at night, and it's, uh, it's bottom line, it's uh, theft, it's losing that data. Well, obviously, if that's one of the biggest concerns, then we have to figure out how do we manage it. And so, um, so really, you know, from a cybersecurity perspective, what what are we really talking about when we say, um, you know, cyber data management? Yeah. Well, I mean, I think cyber data management or managing data using uh, using cyber uh, techniques um, has it has really a lot to do with understanding your data, um, understanding what data is important, what data may not be so important, um, classifying it and securing it appropriately, controlling access, controlling movement, uh, these sorts of things. It can get very complicated with a small data set. It can get almost impossible with what we're seeing uh, in today's world of data. Right, and so that's, that's actually a, a pretty important point, right? So a lot of times we've talked about shadow IT and the reason shadow IT exists is because, well, hey, the way that IT department wants me to do it is hard, so <laughs> I'm gonna create my own way because I have access to do that, I'm gonna use um, some in internet tool and, and I'm gonna circumvent the IT department and it's because the right way is too hard. Um, and so when we talk about data management um, within the enterprise today, um, it's, it's hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, and you, you, know, you kind of touched on it. Uh, one of the fundamental elements of, uh, of security is, has to do with people and culture. And mm -hmm. you know, typically we run into this a lot when we're trying to uh, uh, increase the cybersecurity awareness of a, of a, of a specific uh, organization. The, the people are going to do what they, what, what, whatever is the easiest way to get the job done. And so, a lot of times, you know, if they don't understand why they should do something uh, exactly, or it slows them down, it's it's going to be hard for them to follow. And so, pro probably one of the biggest challenges we have is when we want to. Encourage uh, proper cybersecurity principles and, 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 and behaviors. We need to give them the kind of tools to help them uh, do that. Right. Yeah. So we, we want to be able to facilitate things. I think in the past, um, you know, traditional IT sort of specifically around data the data side of things and storage is that um, you know we would create groups and provide access controls to who can do what, and then an admin would be responsible for doing all of these things. Um, and uh, and so we know that from a cyber perspective, this doesn't really, you know, uh, maybe it doesn't cut it because it doesn't address things like dark data or it doesn't deal with content of the data. And just because the person has access to the file doesn't mean they actually have the the, the right uh, to know what's in that file. And, and it gets very complex um, to sort of you know deal with this. And 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 to do that, you do need other tools, right, to sit on top. It's not just um, your storage system saying yes or no can I access that file, which is the way it's been running for more than 30 years. It's, um, you know, hey, uh, yes or no, can I access that file? Oh, and what other things do I have to pull together to sort of, you know, protect that data that someone's trying to get at? Because it, it may not be the person who uh, that data is intended for. Right. No, that, it really becomes a, um, a, a complex uh, situation. Um, and I think it's one that uh, the majority of the companies out there don't quite focus enough on. I mean, we've got them looking at security controls um, from the network uh, and creating strong situational awareness of the, of the network, all the way down to the endpoint, uh, you know, the, 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 the laptop or, or desktop. But this part about the data, it seems to be the land of the lost for a lot of these companies. And, um, and so when there's an incident, um, the reaction goes pretty much up to the point of the data, and then it just goes into a crawl. Um, recovering the data, uh, understanding what's, 
what's happened to the data, even just the basic reactive measures that, uh, that are involved in, in, in an incident, um, let alone the proactive things that we need to actually get to to stop that stuff from happening. Right, and so you, you mentioned reactive. Uh, I think a lot of, the, a lot of the, the traditional tools that exist are reactive. By the time you figure out what's mm -hmm. happening, it's just too late, right? Yeah. So, so having an integrated system or, um, you know, that could kind of uh, prevent a, an attack or actually know exactly what an attack looks like because it's controlling access to the data. Um, yeah, I had, a, I had a customer just <laughs> recently because <laughs> Uh, they got hit with a basic form of ransomware. It was just a really lightweight version. I mean, they've got some really nasty stuff out there. But this one, it took out one of uh, a couple of their critical users. Um, quickly recognized it from a security perspective, and we got down to the actual response piece where we had to, A, recover the data, mm -hmm. uh, and then try to figure out you know, what happened and why this happened. That took uh, days. Mm -hmm. I mean, that shut down a piece of that business uh, in a way that's just unacceptable for, um, for today's uh, business community. Yeah, so, well, that, that's actually a really good segue into, you know, so one of the technologies we have uh, within the MyRAC uh, data management platform um, is, uh, is sort of, uh, we kind of call, we have our, our DVR capability, right, where we're constantly recording um, data for a 24-hour period, right? So if you talk about um, a ransomware type scenario, then it doesn't matter if the admin set, set up the system right or not, it just, it'll always do it. Um, uh, but then we have full audit capability, so if you're trying to kind of put the pieces of the puzzle back together, um, you'll have some good insight um, into who touched what when um, and how um, and from what locations, right? So all those things you need to put together. So even if you weren't able to um, prevent it from happening in real time, uh, you would still be able to address uh, the challenges trying to, you know, put the pieces of the puzzle back together and, and maybe shorten the time span from days to uh, a couple hours. Oh, I, it was incredible. I sat there throughout that whole incident and was saying to myself, gosh, I wish they had rack top. <laughs> I mean, this uh, would have made the world a difference. Shameless plug. Uh, well, thanks, Joe. Or something <laughs> similar, right? If yeah. one exists. Let's well, there get it going. So. Um, but uh, well, let's talk about the cloud for a second. Uh, I think that um, the cloud <laughs> makes things easier in one aspect mm -hmm. and exponentially harder in another. What is the cloud? Because everybody's, all I hear from our customers are, can we put data uh, in your cloud? And as you know, the cloud is part of our data management solution. Um, and they, they ask, so that the cloud is first on everybody's mind. What does the cloud do with respect to cybersecurity now? Well, like, how does this complicate the scenario? Well, yeah, so it originally became really concerning, very, very concerning. Uh, we are all heard the horror stories about security in the cloud. Right. And I really am not sort of an expert to, to go in deep on how secure the cloud is or not. It's evolving and very, very regularly. But what I will say is, is overall the cloud and, and cloud-based solutions have have uh, increased the level of security, um, especially for organizations that, that, that that's not their core competency. Um, standing up a web or a, a mail server in the cloud and having a, a, an organization that really knows how to do that um, for them actually becomes a far more secure instantiation of that than them trying to do it themselves. And, and the same thing goes with data management. Yes, doing data management for your very self, using your own people, and all of that is a, is a great idea. But if that's not your core competency as a company, if that's what, what your business, what you are in the business of doing, right. um, you should leave it to an expert. And if you don't want to bring that expert on uh, in, internally, uh, reach out and, and work with them through the cloud. Um, these choices are there, and they are far more secure than, than what you'll likely come up with for yourself, right? Yeah. So that I mean, that spurs a, a whole different topic on the on the, the build it versus buy it, and that you know, since sort of we've seen open source takes a, a predominant role um, within the uh, technology um, as a whole, but even within the enterprise, um, you saw a lot of shift between from buy it to build it mode, where people just go build it themselves, and and uh, and there's really has to be a balance because um, you know they're not not everybody. Um, can solve some of these more complicated challenges um, by just piecing stuff together. Because if it's not your your core competency, um, 
as you mentioned, then, then it gets to be very challenging. Um, so, um, so let's talk about from, a, um, you know, the data itself um, we mentioned is, is, is kind of the key component, right? We want to protect that data. Um, but we also know that we need to use the data, right? Mm -hmm. So there, there kind of is the, is the conundrum. So um, it's not really like, you know, even if you put money in a vault, at some point you have to spend the money, which means you have to take it out. And that's kind of with data. So it, mm -hmm. is your, it is your gold and your most valuable asset, but you also have to use it. And unlike money where you take it out and spend it, with data, you take it out and you put it back, and you take it out and you put it back again, and and so you you kind of have the, you have to you can't just lock it up, and, and so um, you know managing all of that it actually kind of goes back to the the tool thing, right? How do you how do you make it that whole process easy? Yeah, and, you know that's it reminds me you were too young, even though you spent a lot of time at the agency. Um, but we honestly had to go to a safe and get our our data, um, and and uh, it was uh, it was an interesting way to to move uh, in the speed of of the threat, if you will. Yeah. Um, but no, data absolutely has to be fully integrated within the enterprise, and the only way you can do that is by creating uh, a management system that's fully integrated. Um, and to put those same sort of, uh, and to put the necessary controls that are fully integrated. And so the idea of going back to the, that whole, um, you know, castle and air gap and, and be segmented and segregated and uh, that it's, it's doesn't work for the business. Mm -hmm. uh, and let's face it, if you're a business, you have to make sure that you're going to work first. Right. So, um, no, creating a very uh, agile, flexible, secure data management system means creating one that's, that's uh, fully embedded in the enterprise. Yeah, it sounds like easy and integrated are the two key components, that's right? exactly it. So, for more information on Racktop's MyRack easy and integrated data management platform, um, you can go to our website at www.racktopsystems.com. Um, you can find all the information there. If you don't find what you're looking for, you can call us uh, if you use that antiquated thing called the telephone, or you can send us an email or do the contact us or tweet or some other way. Joe, it was a pleasure as always. Absolutely. Uh, for Joe, myself, until next time. <laughs>